Welcome, everyone, to Season 2 of Murder in Stratton County. The mystery saga continues with even more murder, mischief, and mayhem. Written by Elizabeth Spoon and Rylan Mason. Narrated by me, Brian Shepard. Episode 11, A Killer for Christmas. The first week of December has been a real doozy here in Stratton. The winter weather has not been kind to the residents or even the mayor, who mumbled under his breath as Patricia came in quietly to start the fire in his room. The temperature outside was minus 15. Sorry to wake you, sir. Just trying to keep the house warm she said as she bent down, placing a few logs into the fireplace. The fire would burn in no time. Looking out his half-opened eyes, he could see and feel that Jordan was already up. What time is it? And where did he go? Is he still here? Brian asked as he sat up, wiping those sleepy eyes open. It's 5 a.m., sir, and Dr. Prescott was called away this morning by Sheriff Ratchet. He told me to tell you that if you felt uneasy about driving to work, to call him or the sheriff for a ride in, she said as she walked over to the windows. Why would I need them? I think I'm more than capable of driving to work now that I don't need an escort, Brian stated as he finally put his feet on the floor and got up. Of course, glancing out the window as she opened the drapes, noticing everything was white and frozen. Can you get the sheriff on the phone? He asked as he had second thoughts, after all. Yes, sir. I'll be downstairs, she answered as she walked out, closing the door behind her. Dressed to impress, hair parted and gelled, Brian was ready to start the day, or at least try. First, coffee, which had the sheriff waiting on the phone as Brian enjoyed the first few sips while seated in the dining room. Hello? Mayor? Are you there? Brian heard, as the sheriff called out while the phone sat on the table. Yes, Dugan, I'm here. Let's not panic. I need a ride into work, Brian said, as he ate his bacon and eggs. I can send Doobie up to fetch you. I'm in the middle of something. By the way, Doobie bet me five bucks you'd call for a ride. Nice to know you had some faith in me doing it myself, Brian replied. Indeed. It's why you owe me five bucks. And Dugan hung up the phone. Deal with him later. Walking outside, Brian was slapped right in the face with the icy, frozen wind mixed with snow. Lousy, good-for-nothing plow guy. Pay him hundreds of dollars, and he can't even show up. What a mess, Brian said. As he tried to take his time on the icy steps. Someone forgot to salt. You know when you try to be careful, and you try your best not to slip up, because if you do, you will fall. And if you fall, you worry about trying not to break anything, and how to get back up. That is what was going through his mind as he slowly took the steps down. Yet Brian tried too hard, and when he finally made it to the bottom, he slipped, body turning and falling on his back, causing him to continue to slide straight across the driveway, coming to a stop finally in front of the fountain. All Brian could do is laugh, even though the pain shot through his head. Patricia, he called out hoping she would hear him. Patricia not only heard him, but she also saw him fall. She, too, was laughing in the window until she heard him call. That's when she went out after him. By the time she got her coat and stepped out, being careful herself, throwing salt as she made her way over to him, he was on his knees, cursing about how wet his suit was. "'Are you all right?' she asked as he grabbed his arm, and helped him up. My head is killing me. Get that lazy sack of goo on the phone and over here as soon as possible. I don't want this to happen to anyone else. 
he stated, as he could notice Doobie down at the end of the drive. Looks like he would have to walk down. Yes, sir. Will you be okay? she asked. Yes, I'll see you later. Have a good day, and thank you, he said as he started to slowly walk down to the waiting cruiser, keeping an eye out for ice and his briefcase, which slid further than him. Good morning, sir. Nice to see you this morning, Doobie said as he smiled and opened the back door. Thank you, Doobie, but there is nothing good about it. I'm cold and frozen. Wait, is the car off? Doobie, it's winter here. Where's the heat? My God, I'm going to turn into an ice pop if you don't turn it on. Yes, sir. Sorry, sir. I'll have it warm in here in no time. Roads are a bit hairy, so buckle up and hang on. Doobie said as he started the cruiser and started down the snowy road, passing Ryan Green's place to the right. Stop for a second, will you? Ryan asked as he tapped on the back of Doobie's seat. Rolling down the window, Ryan noticed that Ryan's drive was plowed, clear, and salted. Well, he will definitely have to find out how this happened. Pretty sad when the mayor... Can't even get out, yet others can. Traffic was slow into town as the one plow truck tried its best to clear the roads and lay salt, which was running out already. They would have to wait two weeks for a new truck's worth. The streets were empty, as most were walking, or the shops or businesses were not open. Town hall should be closed, he muttered. What was that, sir? Doobie asked as they approached town hall. Steps not cleared. Great. Nothing, Doobie. This will be fine. Hopefully I can make it up the steps. Have the town workers gone on strike? Nothing is shoveled or salted around here. Sorry, sir. I'll have someone over as soon as I get back to the station. Are you all right on your own? Brian took a moment to scope out the many steps that led up and into the front of the building, all looking like the ones back home. Strange request. Any chance you'd hold my hand? I can't fall again. And in front of town hall? Doobie just blinked a few times before unbuckling himself, getting out, coming around, and letting Brian out. Okay, as weird as it was... Doobie took the mayor's hand and walked beside him slowly, up one step at a time, not speaking a word. Jordan, what do you make of this? Sheriff Ratchet said as he stood in front of his window, outlooking the town hall next door. Through the window, Jordan watched as Doobie held Brian's hand, helping him up the stairs. Uh oh, this was bad. Jordan thought as he grabbed his coat and headed for the door. Babe, hey, you okay? Jordan yelled over to Brian as he had just made it to the top with Doobie's help. This startled Doobie, who jerked quickly to see who was yelling. This caused him to slip. Brian knew it was coming, just rolled his eyes as he fell and slipped down the steps, landing on Doobie. Sir, are you okay? Doobie asked as he looked into the mayor's eyes. Jordan was quick to come and rescue Brian off of Doobie. You all right? Jordan asked as he wiped Brian off. Now everyone had come out to see what the fuss was. Yes, I'm fine. Sore, but good, Brian replied as Jordan helped him. Good morning, sir. Oh, God, did you fall or something? Ryan asked as Brian came walking in. Ryan Green had taken over for Debbie, who, for the time being, was being held without bail. For what, you ask? Why murder, of course. Yes, I did. Poor Doobie here took me with him, Brian replied, with a not-so-happy look on his face. Sadly, I was a distraction, Jordan admitted. Brian, you should have used the back stairs. They were shoveled when I got here, Ryan said as he opened Brian's 
office door as they all piled in, Doobie taking his place at the security desk opposite Ryan's. I brought you an ibuprofen 800 for you, as I knew you must have fallen this morning, Jordan said as Brian sat behind his desk, taking the pill from Jordan and taking it with his coffee that Ryan had waiting for him. Thank you. I'm all set. I'll see you later. Tell Ratchet I'll call him in a bit. A nod and a kiss on the forehead is all Jordan had to do, and out the door he went. Back to the sheriff's office, where poor Debbie was suffering from a self-inflicted wound. She's going to be out for at least a couple of hours, Judge, Jordan said, as Judge Stephanie Wallencheck stood inside the sheriff's office, waiting for Jordan to return with an update. Well, this is fantastic. Did she say anything to anyone before this happened? She asked, as both the sheriff and Deputy Marks looked at each other. No, ma'am. She said she was hungry and asked for something to eat, Marks said. She didn't say anything else, just that she was hungry. And then what happened when you brought her the food? She asked. Nothing. She took the food and sat on the bed and ate it, Marks answered. Unbelievable. You were able to get a hold of her lawyer, I'm assuming? They are still coming from over the mountain, but sadly it'll be a couple of days. I'm just surprised that she would go this great of lengths not to say anything more about what happened, Stephanie said as she shook her head in disgust. Debbie had taken her fork and dug her tongue out, ending any chance of speaking the truth. Must have tasted good with the leftover pork roast and mashed potatoes with gravy Marks had in the fridge. Yeah, but the question is, why did she do it? Jordan asked. Curious, as he knew there must have been more. This is certainly going to be an interesting Christmas.